And JP Morosi, I asked you yesterday if we could find homes for free agents. You delivered and then some extra credit for you. Good morning to you. You have Justin Turner news heading north of the border. Tell me more. Good morning, Lauren. He is indeed a one-year deal for Justin Turner with the Toronto Blue Jays. The expectation Canada. is he is, yes, thank you, Harold. Uh, we expect he will be in the Jays every day, DH, with potentially some starts mixed in at first base and third base. And Lauren, he is an excellent fit for this team for a couple reasons. Number one, they wanted to get a veteran leader on and off the field. All of us know that is Justin Turner in every way. He is also someone who is relatively platoon split neutral. He's been able to certainly hit right-handed pitching very well during the course of his career. And there's the belief that with the Jays, he will have a tremendous impact on some of their younger players. And certainly, Vlad and Bo, as they near some really crucial years of their careers as they approach free agency after 2025. So, for right now, this, of course, adds in now to Isaiah Kiner-Falefa having come in to the Blue Jays lineup as well. They're trying to collectively get a little bit better, a little bit more comprehensive and balanced, and lower the strikeout rate. That was a huge concern for them late last season. Turner, as we know, one of the best bat-to-ball guys in the major league. So that puts Turner on the Blue Jays. I think next up, Lauren, in the in the bats conversation, we'll see where the likes of J.D. Martinez, Jorge Soler, and others land next. Mm, Matt is obsessed with J.T., 39 years old, and he has had peaks and valleys in his career, and we are thrilled for him. How about a trade, J.P.? Jorge Polanco to the Mariners. My goodness, they are always moving and shaking. What'd they give up in the deal? Give me the details. You know, Lauren, well, there was a Florida Gator in yes. this trade, no, I should no, no, note. No. Anthony D. Sclavani going to the Minnesota Twins. I like this deal on both sides. A really interesting play because the Mariners, we know they've been trying to add to their lineup and get more balance into their lineup without necessarily spending a ton in free agency due to where their payroll is. And Polanco via trade is a very good cost-effective addition of a switch hitting bat in the middle of the lineup who I think will fit exceptionally well with the talent they already have in place. Yes, they did give up four players. Uh, as I mentioned, Di Sclafani will likely be a depth starter for the Twins. Justin Topa, a very reliable arm in the Mariner bullpen. He was among the top 20 relievers in the American League last year in terms of appearances. So he's going to be, I think, a very impactful reliever for the Minnesota Twins. But in general, the Mariners have done a pretty good job. They added, of course, Rayleigh as well uh, over the course of this offseason. They've done a pretty good job with their budget of adding depth to their lineup. And so now the big test will come for the Mariners as they report to Peoria, Arizona. How does Polanco fit? He probably will bat third uh, in this lineup when you consider where the other options are for the Mariners. They've got Cal Raleigh, of course, coming back. He is a, a middle-of-the-lineup type bat. They've got Mitch Garver as their everyday DH. But it's going to now be a different look to the Mariner lineup and I think adding that veteran presence and some excitement with Ori Polanco was one of their key goals for this offseason. I, I'm listening to you wondering what Jerry DePoto does to relax. Like, has he, has he ever been to a spa? <laughs> he, just he makes cannot, trades, Lauren. He to, to, to wind down, it's the, the, that's people. like the, the dessert. More trades. That's right. Some people are wired differently. We are in, by the way, the teens in terms of days until pitchers and catchers. How the heck do we get here? And more importantly, the Cy Young Award winner, Blake Snell, is unsigned. There are a few arms that stand out uh, for you right now. Who stands out? Yes, as you mentioned, Blake Snell is still out there, Jordan Montgomery as well. But let's talk about a couple other arms okay. who are veteran free agents still available. Hunjin Ryu and Michael Lorenzen. On Ryu, I think it was very important. Second half of last year, he was able to return to the Blue Jays rotation. He had an ERA under four. He wasn't necessarily going six or seven innings, but a reliable back-end starting pitcher. And I think whether it's Ryu or potentially Michael Lorenzen as well, one team I would mention, the San Diego Padres as a potential fit because they, of course, have had to make some different moves. They right now are minus Blake Snell. Uh, they also traded Juan Soto, but they do have, I think, spot in that rotation for maybe one more veteran starting pitcher. And Ryu, in general, I was told he's in South Korea right now at home getting his routine in terms of the offseason and basically in a normal status with respect to his throwing, ramping up, and, and is in really a normal offseason mentality. So no no rehab type of a uh, schedule for Hunjin Ryu. So very good sign for him there. And I would expect as a veteran 
free agent starting pitcher he will sign, I would expect, sure. in the coming weeks. I would imagine a little antsy as the, as the time ticks away, right, getting ready for spring training. JP, I saw you watching the guys talking about Jimmy Williams. It's affected and impacted so many organizations, and I know you want to say a few words. Yes, I thought that as I read the, the obituaries and reflections on Jimmy Williams' career yesterday, uh, a couple really stood out to me. Michael Silverman in the Boston Globe and Sean McAdam uh, of Massachusetts Live. And I think both of them captured the essence of Jimmy Williams so well, calling him one of the best teachers the game has ever seen. Someone who certainly had a, a really strong idea of how the game should be played. I love how in Sean McAdams' piece, he talked about how he was actually coaching third base and wheeling around Sid Bream in that amazing Game 7 play for the Atlanta Braves against the Pittsburgh Pirates. So, of course, time as a major league manager with three different organizations. How many people in the world can say they did that, have three different managerial tenders? This tells you how how skilled he was as a teacher, and certainly he he was someone who managed and had a great amount of trust in a young Nomar Garcia Parra. He managed Pedro Martinez as well. He would take a stand when he had to. He'd be very firm in a lot of ways, but I, I think as both Sean and Michael wrote, uh, one of the best teachers that this generation, the last 30 to 40 years of managers, had ever seen wow. in the game of Major League mm, Baseball. That's the impact on the next generation, right? Well said, JP. Thanks for sharing.